Dr. Oz show for the first time. Let go of the guilt and just indulge. Why giving up the guilt could be the best thing you do for your health all year. As a physician, I gotta say, I love this guilty pleasure. And the Hungry Girls, guilt-free dinner swaps the whole family will love. It's so simple, you do not know the difference. Next. Well, let me ask you, when was the last time you took time for yourself without feeling guilty? You can't remember? Well, today I am doing something I have never done before. I'm going to help some deserving viewers get the day off. I'm speaking with your assistant, Dorothy. Yes. Who I understand has worked for you tirelessly for seven years, six yeah, days okay. a week, and she needs a day off. Um... Uh. Hi, Lois. It's Dr. Oz. Dr. Oz? Hi! I know Tarsha's been your loyal daughter for 36 years now. But I don't want Tarsha to run any errands today because I think she's exhausted and she needs a day off. Tarsha, what are you doing? Hello? This is Dr. Oz from the Dr. Oz Show. The Dr. Oz? Your mom's a good mom, but she's also pretty tired. Would you mind if your mother took the day off? <laughs> You get the day off. Great job. That's not Dr. Oz. Yep, it was me. Does it? All these people took the day off. This is why they're so happy. Because it's a guilty pleasure that's good for your health. So if you're sick of me saying don't do this or warning you not to do that, then this is the show for you. I'm going to show you why I want you to indulge in guilty pleasures and how they're critically important to your health. Let's start with Tarsha, because she's here today, and she is indulging. Hey, Tarsha, come join me. How are you? Hi, that was fun oh. calling your mom, your daughter. Yes, it was, was. good. <laughs> now, listen, why is it so hard for women to take the day off, just to get away for one day? Well, first of all, it's because I have a two-year-old at home. Yeah. And then secondly, when they do give me some free time, I have a business that I'm running. So I don't really get it. So you don't make time for you? Not really. So how's it been? You took a day off today. Um, it's been, it's been okay. It's been a little challenging because I'm like thinking in the back of my head of other things that I could be doing, but I'm glad I'm here. But that's the point exactly. What is it that makes it so hard just to relax? And even if you can enjoy the one day that you're supposed to indulge in. Because you feel guilty. You think that you have all these things to be doing. It seems kind of irresponsible, I guess you would say. Yeah. That word guilt. We're going to talk about that a lot today. Because guilt comes in and it's a very important issue for me, so we're going to tackle it head on. Okay. Here's the deal. Let go of the guilt that Tarsha talked about and just indulge. You know why? Because it's important for your health. And to prove it, let's have some fun. Now, did you ever wonder if some guilty pleasures are better for you than others? Or if some are actually healthy? Well, you're about to find out. Three viewers are going to reveal their guilty pleasures. You're going to vote for the one you think has a hidden health benefit. Meet Marlena. A busy mom of seven children. My guilty pleasure is sneaking a few of these donuts early in the morning. Every Saturday, I buy a box of donuts for my kids. But what my family doesn't know is that I get a few extra on the side, and they're all mine. I eat them alone in my car, and it's like it never happened. Up next is Ellen an empty nester. My guilty pleasure is hard to admit, but I love to gossip. I buy a new gossip magazine every day. I love to know all the dirt. When I find out some juicy news about a celebrity or a neighbor, I can't help myself. I have to call someone. Can you believe it? It gives me such a rush. I know it's wrong, but it's my guilty pleasure. And finally, there's Adriana, a fifth grade teacher and mother of two. My family thinks I'm always busy grading papers for school. But sometimes, I sneak off and watch marathons of the Jersey Shore on TV with a big bowl of pasta and a glass of Merlot. I can't get enough of that Snooky. She cracks me up. Just don't tell anyone. But whose guilty pleasure is actually good for your health? This is going to be a lot of fun. All right, Marlita, we're going to start with you. Why are donuts such a guilty pleasure for you? Dr. Oz, I am on a diet. <laughs> I lost a total of 16 pounds, so the last thing I should be doing is eating donuts. <laughs> well, let me ask you, have they always been your guilty pleasure? Well, I've always loved food. Uh, I still do love food. <laughs> but before my husband and kids, it was nights out with my girls. So how come you're not indulging with them anymore? 
Well, you know, you kind of feel guilty because we have seven kids between us. You do? Seven. I'll keep you hopping. I thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and now the two, the youngest two, are still at home. So I kind of feel guilty. I didn't feel like I spent a lot of time with the oldest ones. So I kind of want to spend that time with the youngest ones. All right. So it keeps you out from going out with the girls and yeah. getting the indulgence that you really want. Uh, yeah. All right. So Marlena's guilty pleasure is... Food. Keep that in the back of your mind. We're going to, we're going to bolt a little bit on this. Oh Ellen. Yes. You love gossiping. <laughs> but uh, but that's, that seems pretty harmless. I mean, you're not hurting anybody by gossiping. So why does it make you feel guilty? It makes me feel guilty because it, it, I know it's bad. I know it's bad. Everybody knows it's bad. You're, you're taught not to gossip about people. It's good manners. Yeah, I taught that. Oh. All right. So we got, we got Ellen on the gossip. And Adriana's <laughs> the, the last competitor. And you love TV marathons with a little bit of wine, a little bit of pasta. So how did that all come about? Well, Dr. Oz, I, I love all three, but uh, the TV is the total escape because I don't have to think about what's going on. My kids, my husband, my dog, it's just a, a total escape. And why do you feel guilty about it? Well, Dr. Oz, I'm a working mother, and in the evenings when I should be spending time with my family, mm -hmm. I, sometimes I need me time. Yeah. So it's, it's my escape. Okay, so uh, audience, by applause. I'm going to ask each of these women, these brave women who are bearing their souls with their guilty pleasures, to stand, and we're going to vote for them. I'm going to ask you which of their guilty pleasures can help them live longer and maybe help you as well, okay? Is it donuts in the morning, Marlena? Audience clap, please, if you think. Yeah. We got uh, friends and, and, and fellow employees clapping there. All right. Is it gossiping? Is Ellen okay? Oh. A lot of voting for gossiping. A lot of votes for that. Or is it that TV marathon with a little bit of wine? Well, the audience has spoken very clearly. But let me surprise you all. It turns out they are all good. And I'm going to explain why this is vitally important. You know why? It's actually healthy to indulge when it's the right kind of thing to indulge in, when it gets you what you actually need. All of them help us get that basic need we have to connect and to feel good, which is why I think it's good. And I spend a lot of time talking about things you should not do, but I want to get folks comfortable in the things that they have to do to feel okay. And here's where it all goes wrong. We add guilt into those small pleasures even when we don't have to. And I don't want that going on because at the end of the day, you're worth taking that little bit of time. So instead of carrying all that guilt around, we're going in a different direction today. So come on up here for a second. Let me show you something. I'm going to show you something that's really cool and really important. I'm going to show each of you why you could be damaging your brain with the guilt you're carrying around. So put those gloves on if you don't mind. Each of you has a little beaker in front of you. That beaker represents the guilt. Now, I'm going to say something important and big, and I've thought a lot about this over the last couple of months, about this whole issue of guilt. Guilt is designed to help us stop doing really bad stuff. Come on over, get you guys a little closer to me, right? It's not designed to weigh us down because we had a donut or gossiped a bit. And it's, this, it, the reason that I don't want it used for those small issues is because it's really powerful and it's really bad for you. So, Marlena, take that little tip. That represents a donut. This is the human brain. The brain's made up of different parts. Some parts are part of, we call it the reptilian part. It's the old, ancient part of the brain. All it really does is protect you and, and, and get away from stuff. Some parts of the brain make us who we are. It builds community, connection. That's this front part of the brain, all right? I want you to pour the guilt from cheating on your diet right on there. Yes. <laughs> and when you do that, you'll see something very interesting happen. Oh. That part of the brain begins to shrivel up. Can you all see that? Wow. Oh That's what guilt does. Okay, Ellen. Okay. I want you to take that gossip, pour it right next to it, on that same part of the brain, right? You're not affecting the key parts that, that drive how you breathe and who you run from and the fears you have. You're changing the parts of your brain that let you cope with the world, that become creative, that allow you to be who you are as a human being. And go ahead, Adriana, pour it again right in the front part there, finish it off. You just have a little bit left and you are shriveling away the front of your brain. Those feelings are just tearing away at it. And so you're gonna lose your focus in life and that takes you in places you don't want to go. Indulging, when it's done smartly and intelligently, guess what? It prevents the stuff from happening, which is why I want you to get past that today. You know, decide what you can indulge in and just go do it and enjoy it and make sure it's the right thing for you to indulge in. Because if it takes the guilt away, it is worth it all. Yeah, love it. Right? So we're clear on guilt. 
Yes. Yeah, All right. Yes. All right, now when we come back, just when you thought no one was watching, find out who's getting turned in for their guilty pleasure. You're not going to want to miss this. Hi, Dr. Oz. I'm Lisa from Cookville, Tennessee, and my guiltiest pleasure is buying myself a birthday cake after I've had a bad day. Up next, well, turned in for their guilty pleasures. What's going on here? Caught on tape, but what she's doing naturally recharges you in a way that nothing else can. And his wife's indulgence gets the thumbs up from Dr. Oz. Reduces your blood pressure, and it changes the hormones in our bodies. More guilty pleasures coming up. So let's start talking. Now the web to have a national conversation about health and wellness. This is a no embarrassment zone. There's no topic that's off limits. I came to work today, I'm so lucky. Yeah. And make sure you're sharing this information with the people you love. You're good to go. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. You don't miss anything. And remember to check back often to see what's new. Now, back to the show. Hi, Dr. Oz. I'm Elizabeth from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And my guilty pleasure is shoes. I'm a heel hoarder. I love high heels, even though I know they're bad for my feet. Today's show is all about guilty pleasures and how indulging is important for your health. Now, someone in this audience is about to be turned in for their guilty pleasure. And I'm going to show them why they should let off the guilt, get rid of that guilt, and feel good about giving in. So first up is Joanne. Where's Joanne? Right here, Dr. Hey, Joanne. You don't mind. Hi. Hi. So, nice to meet you, Joanne. Thank you. So, who are you turning in? Well, it would have to be my colleague, Kathy. We both work in a dental office, and I find her taking these naps during her lunch break in the dental chair. How do you like that? <laughs> Kathy, please join us. <laughs> that is oh, so kind of you, Joanne. Are, are you mad at Joanne for sharing? Don't be mad. Oh, Don't no. be mad at me. <laughs> Hi. I can't be mad. Is she mad at me? <laughs> so, Kathy, she you... does it, too. <laughs> you both do it? Oh, I love this. Oh, that is what Miss Kathy does. So wh what what's does. going on here? First of all, are you uh, upset at all? About no, no, I can't no, be upset. Be. We work in a pediatric dental office, <laughs> and <laughs> enough said. It, <laughs> it's it's wonderful and, and it's great and very rewarding, but very stressful. Hectic. So it's sometimes we have to just regroup a little. So uh, normally it would be just fun to hear the story, but actually Joanne took the liberty of getting some footage for us. Very so, nice. So if, you, oh, if, you, if, you, if you can narrate this for us, I'd like to see this if you don't mind. Oh there you go. Now, you, what is going on here? Oh. Kathy, what's going on here? Oh my God. <laughs> Sorry, Kathy. Sorry. Now that is, that is not a picture, that was footage. There was no movement. I mean, that's some of the deepest sleep I have ever oh seen. My God. All right, so here's the, here's the news. As a physician, I got to say, I love this guilty pleasure. Ooh. I mean, probably more than any other. Napping is such a healthy thing. It's associated with longevity, vital to your health. Studies have been done on this. It reduces heart attack rates. It naturally recharges you in a way that, in a way that nothing else can. Mm -hmm. So I like that a lot. But how and when you nap happen to be critical. So can I share one little insight with you? Sure. So this is important for everybody to understand. The body is naturally tired about eight hours after we awaken. So let's say you get up at 7 in the morning. At around... Three in the afternoon, roughly, you actually need a nap. Now, the nap should only be about 10 to 20 minutes. You mentioned 10 minutes real briefly. Is yep. that about right? Mm -hmm. That's cool. Anything longer than that 20, 30-minute range could actually make you feel you're feeling groggy when you wake up. Mm -hmm. So you won't quite be there. You get too deep into the sleep pattern. So short nap, about eight hours after you, you, you get up in the morning. The doable, mm -hmm. even with the drilling and the whining of yeah. the kids and the crying and screaming. Once I start grinding my teeth, it wakes me right up. <laughs> I love that. Now, the best places to nap is in a dry, a cool, dark place. That's sometimes hard to find at work. So I've taken the liberty of getting both of you, since you both oh. are nappers, oh. my, my little sleep masks. Thank you. So put them on. Let me see them. Thank you. Oh, you like that? Love it. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Keep napping. Thank you. All right. Move it on. The next guilty pleasure uh, that can, you can really feel good about is going to be revealed by my friend Lamar. Hi, Lamar. How are you doing, Dr. Oz? How are you? Nice to meet you. Why do you look so nervous back there? <laughs> Why don't you stand up with us just in case? You can support Lamar in case he says something wrong. Okay. Absolutely. All right, all right, Lamar, so who are you turning in? I have to turn in my beautiful wife of 19 years, Erin, <laughs> for taking... Um, Excessively long bubble baths. Oh my god. Oh my god. 
So, Erin, you get to defend yourself now. <laughs> Thank so you. So how often do you really take baths? Uh, about two or three times a week. And I, I do it I like late this. night. Like we have four children. So it's my quiet, uninterrupted time. Is that the only time you're by yourself? Um, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's an important yeah. point. You know, long, luxurious baths are a great indulgence. And I don't oh, want any okay. guilt around them at all. I'm not okay. saying there is. Uh, Lamar, I don't want you making her feel guilty about it yeah. either. Because, <laughs> Erin, you're absolutely on the right target with this stuff. Baths are good for a bunch of reasons. The warm water actually yeah. dilates up the blood vessels, reduces mm -hmm. your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's good at many levels. And it changes the hormones in our bodies. Right? Mm -hmm. So all those things are great benefits that we have. And you know what? If it gives you that few minutes by yourself, yeah. without the four kids and Lamar breathing down your neck, <laughs> you know, and it's never about the bath, you know. There's that. much more going on there. Yeah, Just trying to track Reflection. Your reflection. <laughs> <laughs> now, but, but I got one tip for you. Come on up here. Uh -huh. This bubble bath you were looking at earlier. Uh, since you're spending so much time in the bath, I got a little tip for you. I think you ought to use baby bubble bath. Mm -hmm. Because the regular bubbles can irritate you down there, mm. if you get my drift. I do. Yes. <laughs> so this would be a smart little change. You can keep the rubber yeah. duckies, and you're good to go. And to get you to enjoy them even more, okay. Lamar and I went 50-50. Wow. And oh, we've chipped in goodness. to get you your own bubble bath oh. collection. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Are you going to let her take those baths now? Absolutely. All right. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. <laughs> Nicely done, darling. All right. Coming up, how to find out. How I can help you get a day off to enjoy the guilty pleasure that's critical to your health. You won't want to miss it. Yeah. Coming up. I love that. The prescription to find time for yourself. That's not a crazy amount to ask for anybody. And later, struggling to put healthy meals on the table. There was one person who could fix this problem. Hungry Girl's guilt-free family dinner swap. Fast, quick, healthy, easy. So let's start talking. Now the web to have a national conversation about health and wellness. This is a no embarrassment zone. There's no topic that's off limits. I came to work today, I'm so lucky. And make sure you're sharing this information with the people you love. You're good to go. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything. And remember to check back often to see what's new. Now, back to the show. Today we're talking about guilty pleasures and earlier in the show I helped a few lucky viewers like Lynn here indulge in the ultimate guilty pleasure, a day off. So let me, let me ask you a question if you can answer for everybody. Why is it so difficult to just get that one little day off? I know for me, Dr. Oz, to get one day off is difficult because I just went from five jobs to four. I have two <laughs> kids involved with the PTA, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, driving them everywhere. Um, I volunteer at Catholic Charities. I plan events. So I have a lot on my plate. So I know for me, it's really difficult to get the day well, Has it been difficult to unwind today? To go from five to four to no jobs for one day? Oh, it's extremely difficult for me to unwind today. I don't even really feel the whole, I'm trying. <laughs> what, <laughs> what have you done? How'd um, you get into it? I went to lunch. You went to lunch? That was the indulgence? It was indulgence because I had my Eckhart Tolle book and I <laughs> didn't have to cook a healthy meal. And I sat down and I relaxed all by myself with no phone, no kids, no one to share anything. And I ate it all by myself, every last bit. <laughs> I love that. You know, I know, this is an important point. You don't have to go off to Vegas to, to enjoy your day off. You just be able to sit at a lunch, eat quietly, read something you want to you know, review again. All that stuff, that's what it's all about, to do a few of those magical things. And you all deserve that time. So today, I'm going to help you. I'm going to prescribe a Dr. Oz's day off. It's very simple. It seems impractical. I know you're all nodding your heads back and forth. But just one day, one single day, is critically important to your health. And it's worth making the investment. Vacation days have been shown not only to reduce stress, but all of the headaches associated with stress, including things like heart attacks, <laughs> they can help you live longer yeah. if you can avoid them. So I want you to take one day off, and then you and everybody else, one day off every two months. That's not a crazy amount to ask for anybody. One day off every two months. And to help you out, I've actually written you a prescription. In fact... It's nice. my doctor's prescription I'm giving to all of you. Here it is. It outlines the many benefits of a day off. All right? And I'm going to give this to everybody if you can get it today. And some of these benefits, they include lowering your blood pressure, lowering the risk of heart disease, big issues that we take a lot of medications for. Boost your memory, your concentration, your mood. You're going to be a more effective worker, a better member of the PTA. You'll be a better mom, a better spouse. It's worth taking that day off. 
and it also enhances your immunity so you're not sick all the time. And you know what? You'll add years to your life so you can enjoy lots more than those six days off a year I'm talking about. That's all I'm asking you to do. And you give it to your boss, to that PTA president, to your family, the people <laughs> you care about and that you love, and tell them that Dr. Oz says you need a day off. <laughs>
Um, he would help us out, especially when I work. He'll come home and he'll cook, help cook meals for us, prep for when I get home. That's so that good. I don't have to always have a hard time. But now that we're into football, I'm the one cooking dinner. So you mentioned 50 pounds. Yes. And you desire to lose the 50 pounds. How was having these meals with your family preventing you from doing that? Because I lose focus because I'm stressed and overwhelmed and just, you know, trying to rush to get it all in so that they can have um, a productive school, school life and so they can learn better and stuff for... Uh, and even when people want to help you out, I mean, I heard a rumor that you brought pizza home once in a while. Yes. That, that, that's the... <laughs> so you make this healthy meal and then Carlos brings pizza in. I think yes. this is a story that reproduces itself over and over again. Carlos Jr., let me ask you if I can. Describe to me a little bit about dinner time with your mom. What's your favorite thing she makes? I think it would be her homemade macaroni and cheese. Homemade macaroni and cheese. He's going to love that for the rest of his life. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> well, I, I, look, things can get pretty hard, and it, it takes a lot of time. Are you willing to chip in with your brothers to make a little difference in your mom's life, to make it a little easier for her? I guess. <laughs> that, that's the best you're going to get out of a little boy, I think. You know, boys are difficult, you know. You know how it is. I know how girls are difficult, too, by but the way. But boys are difficult. <laughs> All right, so as soon as I heard all your stories, I knew, I knew there was one person who could fix this problem. Could make it fast, quick, healthy, easy, all that in one. She spent her entire career figuring out how to help busy people eat guilt-free meals in the real world. I want you all to meet Hungry Girl. There is no one on the diet scene quite like her. Wow! Lisa Lillian, the self-proclaimed Hungry Girl. She's a best-selling author, host of her own show on the Cooking Channel, and more than one million women follow her online. All thanks to her very practical, healthy, and tasty approach to cooking. If a recipe is too complicated, I know I won't make it, so all the recipes I create are super easy. Her secret? She's cracked the code to guilt-free food swaps. I know how hard it is to make smart choices about food when you're really busy. That's why I do all the hard work for you. I find the best swaps, so you don't have to. So I gave Hungry Girl a mission. I armed her with the Calderon family's food journal and challenged her to transform their favorite go-to dinners into quick and easy calorie cutting feasts. I already see an easy swap here. I can't wait to show this family how I'm gonna remake some of their favorite foods. When we come back, Hungry Girl Lisa Lillian is here with simple, guilt-free dinner swaps that will have your family running to the table. Stay with us. Woo! You're going to like it, Carlos. Yeah. Yeah. Up next. One of my best swaps of all time. Hungry Girl's guilt-free secrets. The best part we haven't talked about yet. A healthy mac and cheese. And later, Dr. Oz's guiltiest pleasure. I love it. Don't go away. Dr. Oz. Dr. Oz's show. So let's start talking. Now the web to have a national conversation about health and wealth. This is a no embarrassment zone. There's no topic that's off limits. I came to work today. I'm so lucky. Yeah. And make sure you're sharing this information with the people you love. You're good to go. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. You don't miss anything. And remember to check back often to see what's new. Now back to the show. For all of you out there who have trouble getting a healthy dinner on the table, hungry girl Lisa Lillian is with us, and she's got some simple guilt-free swaps that your family needs to have. Lisa, you've helped millions of folks with this. Monique is actually a subscriber to you. you know, it's it's right. fascinating how deeply you go into our society. So what we're going to do today is to understand some of the biggest secrets. Let's start with number one that you always want to share with folks. Well, the biggest secret I have is that you have to find swaps. Simple little better for you swaps that can turn decadent foods, comfort foods that you think you can't really eat. You sneak in some healthier ingredients. The kids, the family will never know the difference and it is so, so easy. So what we're going to do is start off with the Calderon family, who's here to taste all the foods. <laughs> kids have started already, They're which really is good news. They're really picking out over there. So Monique, I actually <laughs> had you track your foods over the last few days. By the way, that's your real kitchen behind you. I hope you feel at home. Right. And I noticed there's a lot of <laughs> breaded items, breaded chicken nuggets, breaded fish sticks. Is that true? Yes. Right. So help, help Monique out. Well, 
we all like fried foods. It's crispy. There's something really satisfying about that crunch, and usually they're deep fried and they're oily. So what I like to do is something I call faux frying. And what I use, one of my best swaps of all time, high fiber brand cereal instead of breadcrumbs. Now, I don't know if you've ever thought about using cereal, Monique, for this instead of breadcrumbs. It's high in fiber. It's low in calories. You just take this and you put it in a blender. Mm -hmm. I find fiber one works best, the texture okay. of it. You turn it into like a powder and then you season it up because it's a little sweet because it's breakfast cereal. But you add whatever seasonings you like and then you use that to coat whatever it is that you'd want to fry, but you bake it. So you can make things like popcorn, you know, shrimp, which I call swap corn shrimp, or <laughs> onion rings, anything you'd normally fry, you can just bake with this coating. It's amazing. Well, I, I love simple concepts that are so easy to apply to your life. And so I think we can actually have Monique, we're gonna copy one of the things she likes to make. Uh, so give me an idea what we can make that might address one of her current needs. Okay. What, what were those boys over there I like noticed, well, I see them eating them now, so I know it's a good sign, but <laughs> they were eating a lot of chicken nuggets in, in the video, and so I'm gonna make them today. Perfect. Now, these are what I call onion chicken nuggets. So this is just chicken breast, and we're gonna dip this in egg whites or egg substitute, which saves calories and cholesterol because yep. there's no yolks. And then you just get that into the cereal crumbs that have been seasoned up. These are seasoned up with onion soup and onion powder and some flavoring. And then you put that on a baking sheet, and then you bake it at 375. It's so simple. How long do you bake it for? About, you know, 10 minutes on each side. You do a little flip. They come out, they're crispy, crunchy, decadent. You do not know the difference, I promise so Monique, you. Monique, you gave me 20 minutes. This is a 20 minute meal. It takes about that much time to make it, I think. All right, so your kids are already having it right now. Yeah. Now, before I ask you to vote on whether you like this or not, Carlos, go ahead and taste it, see if, you're, if you'd like it as well. I'm gonna give you the calories and the fat content. This is so much pressure. All right, a typical serving of chicken nuggets that normally would be served in the Calderon family that Monique would have slaved over for much longer than 20 minutes would have 490 calories, 26 grams of fat. Not good for her, Carlos, or any of the three kids. Our current Hungry Girls guilt-free chicken nuggets has 211 calories, and get this, two and a half grams of fat. Kids, thumbs up, thumbs down. Their mouths are full, so they can't talk. Okay, Carlos, do you like it? Yes, it's good. It's good, isn't it? Yep. It's crispy. All right, let's move on. Now, we got a guilt-free dinner swap for everybody. Now, Monique, I noticed your family has a lot of beef. Yeah. All right, so, you know, tacos, raviolis, you know, those are both in your, on, your, on your recipes list last week. The problem is that beef can be very high in saturated fats. So give me a guilt-free dinner swap out. This is amazing because people see this and they're not sure like where it is or where you find it. It is so readily available at every supermarket in the freezer section. It is meatless soy crumbles. Hmm. It is just soy protein. It's textured like beef. It tastes exactly like beef. It comes pre-cooked so you don't even have to cook it. Oh, and I guess what? That. No saturated fat at all. That sounds good. It's good stuff. 60 calories a half cup, like less than a gram of fat. It's like life-changing stuff. So what are you going to make for the Calderon kids today? These are other things you can make, Yeah, right? you can make so many things with it. You can make lasagna, chili, quesadillas, burritos. But today, mm -hmm. I know you guys like tacos, so we're making <laughs> mega meaty meatless tacos. Dr. Oz, you have to help me. Oh, can look you at them. That? They already finished their tacos. <laughs> did you so feed those kids like today, Woody? Uh, yeah. I should well, ask you, Carlos Jr., can you tell the difference between what you're eating and a regular taco? Mm. I think he's too busy chewing. He's too busy chewing. Don't talk with your mouth open. Different. <laughs> it tastes a little different than my regular tacos. It tastes a little different. Is it good enough that you'd be happy eating this if your mom was happy? Maybe. Mom. Maybe. I'll take That's it. That's a yeah, so resounding these, by the yes. Way, yeah, these also have some mushrooms mixed in, so you can add veggies to it, and then you just coat it with cheese, and, you know, you add your usual taco toppings, reduced fat cheddar cheese. You know, I'm, chopped I'm, tomatoes. I'm taking a bite here. That is taco-rific. Oh, Look at that. These are good. What are you talking about? <laughs> William's done. William's leaving the table. <laughs> William's good, right? He's trying to get into his kitchen. He's trying to get into the kitchen. <laughs> William, it's just William, a picture. You can't get in there. <laughs> All right. William. While the kids have already finished their meals, I'm going to summarize our calories and our fat content. This swap is going to save you. Two average ground beef tacos, two of them, have 450 calories, 26 grams of fat. That's a lot, folks, especially for kids. Two of the Hungry Girls Mega Meaty Meatless Tacos. Get this, 215 calories, eight and a half grams of fat. It's good. Kids are happy. Hi, Dr. Oz. My name's Beth, and thanks to Hungry Girl and her tips, 
I lost 243 pounds. My favorite recipe of hers is her turkey and veggie mini meatloaves, and it will serve her family for two nights and we don't have to worry about overeating. Let's start talking. Now the web to have an international conversation about health and wellness. This is a no embarrassment zone. There's no topic that's off limits. I came to work today, I'm so lucky. And make sure you're sharing this information with the people you love. You're good to go. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything. And remember to check back often to see what's new. Now, back to the show. I lost 111 pounds with Hungry Girl Recipes. My tip today is to combine plain Greek yogurt, a little bit of strawberries, some honey. I have a little bit for breakfast, and then I put a little in some freezer pop containers, and then I have a delicious frozen yogurt treat later in the day. I scoured your emails, tweets, and Facebook messages looking for the number one family meal you wish was healthier. And hands down, there was one meal I got asked about over and over again. Dr. Oz, I need your help. I make macaroni and cheese for my family three times a week. I know how unhealthy it is and fattening. And I end up eating it all anyway. Can you please show me an alternative way to make it healthy? Mmm. Hungry girl, Lisa Lillian is back, and she's going to turn your box mac and cheese into a guilt-free dinner. The Calderon family is very interested in mac and cheese. The boys refuse to leave, so they're going to stick around the taste test for us. So, what's the big secret with mac and cheese? Well, with mac and cheese, you know what? Those boxes have two and a half servings, but it's really more like one serving. We've all been there. You know, yeah. you're just not satisfied if you eat one cup. So, you want to start by using the whole grain mac and cheese, which is already higher in fiber, mm -hmm. so it's more satisfying. But then you want to bulk it up with some secret, healthier ingredients. You get a much larger I serving like size for not a lot of calories. Very, I love the idea of just adjusting what the kids think they're getting. Let's see what they can really figure <laughs> they're out. They're not here. paying attention that much, so don't worry about it. <laughs> the first mac and cheese expanded. What do you got up your sleeves? Okay, this is shredded cabbage. You take this, you put it in the microwave for a few minutes, soften it up and it gets into like little shreds, and you can bulk up pasta. It just picks up the flavor of whatever you use. Whether you have a cheese sauce or a marinara, it's fantastic. And when do you mix it into the mac and cheese mix? You mix it in at the very end. Once your mac and cheese is done, you just take your cooked cabbage, you mix it in, and voila. Perfect, okay, the second expander. Cauliflower. Now, a lot of people use cauliflower to expand mashed potatoes, but what you might not know is if you take frozen cauliflower, again, you cook it in the microwave for a few minutes, and then you just roughly chop it. So you see it here? You don't want to, you know, mash it up. You just want to chop it a little bit, and it's a perfect expander for pasta because you just throw it in the bowl again at the very end once it's all cooked, and it really bolts it up, picks up the flavor nicely, and it's good for you, and you eat so much more food for the same amount of calories. All right, two good expanders, they would definitely work, but Lisa has saved her all-time favorite, mac and cheese expander, and she's got some critics today. I want you to taste it, and Carlos Jr., since you're the tough critic over there, would you tolerate this? I'll use that <laughs> phraseology. Good enough? Yay, got a smile! Wow! All right. Lisa, give us the big secret expander. Okay, the big secret here, it is one of my all-time favorite foods and a food that I think is totally underrated, butternut squash. Now, oh. not only is it a great, you know, it's a great expander, it's a great swap for potatoes, but if you take butternut squash, you cook it in the microwave, and then you add it to mac and cheese, you know what you're doing? You are really, really expanding your serving size, and you're adding vitamin A and potassium and fiber. Oh, I love this idea. Check this out. Want to help me? Yes, I'm. I oh, look at him. I'm a good mixer. You're, you're Once all the hard part's done, I come in, I swoop in to eat. Double handing it. All right. Here's the part that I love the most, though. Okay. okay. That is a heaping cup. That's one. Ha. Now there's your second cup. And check out the difference in the serving size. Monique, what do you think about this? I think it's a good idea. It's reasonable, isn't it? And it's yes. fast and it's quick and it's easy. But the best part we haven't talked about yet. Uh, this, again, I'm going to go through this real carefully because it's important to get all this messaging across. One serving of regular boxed mac and cheese. And remember, it's only got one cup, which I think we see you're right. A lot of people will not be satisfied with this as your main course no, of dinner. No, who would want to eat that alone? 390 calories, 17 grams of fat, and you're depressed because you want more. One serving of Hungry Girl's guilt-free expanded boxed mac and cheese has two cups. Not one, two cups, a lot more stuff to eat. 
354 calories and five grams of fat. Look at that. That's twice as much food for less calories and 70% less fat. Are you happy with that? Love it. Fat and calories, are you happy? Yes. Absolutely. Right. And you know what? If this gets you past the guilt that we've been talking about and gets you to believe that you're raising your kids the way you're raised by your mom, it's worth it just for that reason alone. Okay. Bless you both. Thanks Thank for being here. So let's start talking. Now the web to have a national conversation about health and wellness. This is a no embarrassment zone. There's no topic that's off limits. I came to work today, I'm so lucky. And make sure you're sharing this information with the people you love. You're good to go. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything. And remember to check back often to see what's new. Now, back to the show. Today's show was all about taking the guilt out of guilty pleasures and allowing yourself to indulge in things that make you happy. Whether it's the occasional donut in the morning or watching a marathon of reality TV, these guilty pleasures are critically important for your health. So, to prove that I mean it, I'm going to share some of my guiltiest pleasures with you. First, believe it or not, I can spend hours in front of the television. And it's usually watching sports, but frankly, I can watch any competitive event. I can crazy things like I can watch darts for hours, poker. And why not just play the game? Or table tennis. I actually like watching these weird sports you don't normally see around. I'm sucked in by the competition itself. So I understand exactly how folks addicted to reality TV marathons, and I know how they can consume you as well. And believe it or not, I have a big-time sweet tooth. I don't brag about it a lot. My favorite, pistachio ice cream. It's my weakness when it comes to dessert. A lot of others here feel the same way. It's creamy. It's cool. It's got that salty flavor. You just can't beat it. And you know what? The best part about it is, I can tell myself I'm having nuts. Now one little trick, see how it's white? You want white pistachio ice cream when it's green, they put coloring in it. You want the real stuff, but this, uh, it's worth indulging. Because you know what? I know once in a while if I can indulge and enjoy myself without the guilt, it's healthier for me. And finally, folks, I love tequila. Now I'm But as a heart surgeon, I would reach for red wine, and I like red wine too. But on a weekend after a long day, I like to drink tequila. And I don't drink alone. I always find somebody else I can enjoy one with. So, folks, let me share with somebody. Here's to everybody out there. Would you join me? Come on. And here, here's to your health. Thanks. Salud. I want you to indulge today. Doctor's orders. So, cheers. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss out on new videos to live the good life.